Wow, what a game that was. We are breaking down in this reaction stream. Auburn versus Tennessee. The Volunteers win in Knoxville 92-84. to We've got your discussion about the score, the stats, and the storylines for this game coming up right now. War Eagle Auburn family and War Eagle, especially to our E2C Network family. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're watching live on the replay, on Facebook, a home base of YouTube, however you got here, whenever you got here. We appreciate you being here and being part of our little family within the Auburn family. Uh, as I said at the start, we have a reaction stream to cover with you all. We want to talk about Auburn versus Tennessee. Folks, y'all just watched a March Madness basketball game that level of play you just watched two of the best teams in the sec go down to the wire with each other and i will admit it right here you watched the best team in the sec tonight win this game and that is tennessee we'll say that right at the outset with the best player in the sec and boy was it a joy to watch tonight so a lot of things to talk about I would imagine there's going to be some discussion around fouls and how long the te the game took to get over with. I think there's a lot of positives tonight to walk away with as well. I think there are some frustrating things that you're going to have from this game. All of that is on the table. All of that's up for discussion. What we'd love for you to do to start off the stream with us is make sure you smash that like button. It is a huge help to get the show started off on a good note. Also, right now in the comments section, if you'll post where you're watching from, your city, your state, if you're international, you can do that. All ways that you can help the show get off to a great start. And, uh, of course, we'd love to know who's here hanging out with us and uh, spending some time. We'd love to say hello to a few. You already see a fine crew checking in. Big Simp, Unbeaten Lake, Brian, uh, Chris already here saying hello. And 9284 is the game that we want to talk about. Auburn falls to the Tennessee ball volunteers and uh, let me just go ahead and say this i'm gonna put it out there this was the best game in the sec this season i know that i mainly focus on auburn stuff here i haven't watched every single sec games and i know there's been some great games thus far but to me I, I think the ending leaves a little bit to be desired because it went down to just you know tennessee getting free throws at the end of it but it pretty much for the last minute until the last minute was a back and forth affair. Uh, Tennessee got about a five to six point lead there with about three minutes left and was able to kind of keep themselves a little bit of a cushion and uh, good teams use that cushion and keep it and uh, use it to win the game. Auburn had that opportunity. Um, looked like they might be able to do it down the stretch in the second half. But uh, we're not able to hold on to that on the road. Nearly pull off a humongous upset uh, in this game. Corey, good to see you. Scott, Drip Edits, uh, WT checking in. Lots of fine folks already here. We got Devin here too. Good to see you. She says, it is frustrating how much we struggle closing out close games. Uh, I think in, you would mainly say that about the losses, which have all except for one come on the road. And, um, yeah, a lot of teams have struggled this year closing out on the road. Uh, it doesn't matter really who you are. No one's been immune to that this season, SEC, NCAA basketball. Otherwise, of course, you would say to that, well, Kyle, everything's on the road. Yeah, but it's not exactly the same. It's a neutral site game. and We all know that Auburn people travel pretty well. Regardless of that, I'm pretty proud of the way the Tigers played in this game. We usually do some TikTok live streams most middays um, during weekdays. And we talked about this, um, I would say this morning, but it was really lunchtime, about what I wanted to see, whether it was a win or a loss, is that a team that looked respectable, looked like they belonged to play with the best in the SEC. And Auburn did that tonight. Was it perfect? No. No, 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 no. Uh, was it uh, great every time? No. But boy, did we have some moments where we could have laid down and we didn't. Against the best team in the SEC, against the best player in the SEC, maybe in college basketball. A little hyperbole, I know but I'm just going to say it. And uh, I think I'm pretty, I walk away from a loss as happy as I can be, if that makes sense. I'm never happy with a loss. I'm never satisfied with it. But boy, um, when you play a team like this and a player like this, Connect, as uh, Drip Edit says, this guy just doesn't miss. Well, I haven't even looked at his stat line yet. We'll look at it in just a second. 40 points, I think, is what it was. Absolutely incredible. 
I know this is an Auburn stream, but we're going to give credit where credit is due. Dude couldn't miss tonight, except for free throws. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You can knock it back with a hand in your face way beyond NBA range, but you struggle a little bit from the three point or, or the, the free throw line. Um, Big Simp says it was a great game. Thanks to the refs. Pearl technical was proof. No, uh, the, the Pearl technical was not proof that the, um, the refs played too big a factor in this game. He did that on purpose to get them fired up. And, you know, th there's a debate whether or not that works or not. Sometimes it does, or sometimes it doesn't. But I will say that, again, the refs were too much a factor in this game for both teams. I, I was thinking if Auburn hangs on to this lead, all you're going to hear from the Tennessee fans is, oh, the fouls, oh, the fouls. Um, but you won't hear that tonight. So hopefully we won't do that as well. Let's, let's be better than that, better than them in that scenario. Um, the, but I will say that the refs affected the flow of the game, the pace of the game, and that is not their job to do that, which can be frustrating to watch at time. A lot of people giving the Dalton connect kid love and very, very much, uh, deserving of that tonight. That one was a war. As I said, this is very much, um, the best team, two of the best teams in the SEC right now that you're at least seeing at this at this point in the season. Uh, let's see. What else are you guys talking about? We want to make sure we get um, some of the things in here. I, we, we've said the things about the refs. We've already talked about that. Jalen Williams being back. How would y'all think? How'd he look? I was super worried about this guy coming back in this quick into the game. Uh, and Knee injuries, as I've said, at nauseum on this show here on YouTube, various other things that we do, it can be a booger to come back from a knee injury. And I guess I underestimated or overestimated how severe that injury may or may not have been because he looked pretty solid out there tonight. He took some pretty hard hits. As I've said a lot, uh, Tennessee's known for their size, their physicality. Note the refs and the, and the fouls tonight. Uh, or non fouls at times on both sides. Um, but I thought he looked good. It was good to see him out there. I mean, I went in a, about a week and a half's time, two weeks almost time, just dreading a season without Jalen, seeing seemingly thinking that was what it was going to be. And here we are, and he looks like he, I won't say he hasn't missed a beat because he definitely has to, you know, get himself uh, completely back. But I thought he did a great job. Uh, in his first thought back or first time back thought he played good, especially on the road. Um, and that's a tough thing. It's tough to come back from a knee injury anytime at your place. It's even tougher to do it uh, on the road against this team. So that's what I, I want to stress here tonight, not just to be a Pollyanna and a sunshine pupper about things. The team looked pretty good. I thought minus the things that we are, are pretty obvious that we're going to be frustrated about. But, um, all that being said, him the team pretty good love to see him back played well berman played well as well yes he did uh leor berman i thought tonight played very aggressive which is not necessarily his style but uh was really kind of a refreshing thing to see today and um yeah what i liked is we saw some people stepping up when others are struggling chad baker mazara especially to start the game was struggling a little bit a lot of people were talking on social media is he forcing things a little bit too much and yeah sure you can make that case but he understood the assignment that Jalen's not maybe 100 percent. i got to step up like i did the last game and can overplay things a little bit but what we did is we had players that not necessarily do a lot of the scoring participate in some of that tonight we'll look at it and see how to what extent it um it affected us uh williams going down was like 2019 when okiki went down not quite I, i've seen that comparison a lot uh not quite but thankfully we're gonna have him back and okiki is um it, it, you know, the okiki story was a little bit different what will be interesting to see is what jalen looks like on Saturday, that knee is going to be sore. I'm sure he's going to be sore, not having run around for a week and a half to two weeks, uh, the way he normally does. So we'll have to watch and see how he feels after that. Kevin. Yes, they were the better team tonight. No shame in saying that. And I think that's the best team in the sec hands down. Uh, I have no 
no problems admitting that whatsoever ever at this point for us to win a share of the sec we're gonna have to win we need to win out tennessee and alabama need to lose two of their three games my advice to you and beaten lake and everybody else don't worry about that the likelihood of that happening very limited because tennessee and alabama play each other so only one of them can lose that's one of those and i don't think tennessee is gonna lose that that the connect kid wow <laughs> Some of the special March Madness teams, yes, they are good basketball teams, but they have that player. And I think we just watched it happen tonight. Uh, how do you feel about Holloway's play towards the end of the game? Uh, it, it's a little bit in, inconsistent at times like it's been. It's the same thing that we've talked about a lot this season. I'm not worried about it, not shocked. He's a young kid with a lot of talent, and I'm super excited to have him as part of this team. Um, not going to get overly critical about a kid just trying to figure out his way when we as fans put a lot of uh, pressure on him. Uh, Tennessee coach is a cheater. <laughs> well, that's what they would say about our coach too. So um, just think about that. They'll, they'll throw those insults right back at us. All right. We've talked a little bit about the initial stuff, 92 to 84. Let's talk about some stats now. And I know that some of these maybe not be the most exciting things in the world, but uh, let's dive into it because it usually takes us doing this to paint the picture of what happened in this game. So we'll start with individual stats tonight. Hats off to Janai Broom, 23 points. He did some work tonight, and it happened early. It happened often, demanded the ball a little bit tonight too, and I think rightfully so. Uh, he had the hot hand most consistently tonight with 23 points. Uh, if he makes a few more of his free throws, you got to wonder if that's going to make a big difference there. Can't blame just one person. Nine rebounds for him tonight. And he has come so close to having so many more double doubles. It's not even funny. Chad Baker with 13 points tonight. Chaney Johnson with fine. Chaney Johnson had a very, what I thought, strong start to the game offensively and defensively, but it kind of tailed off there. That remains to be seen if Jalen's getting a little bit more time. Uh, Denver Jones, a pretty solid night, uh, knocked down some very um, clutch shots at times, both two-point and three-point. was 100% from the free-throw line. Uh, Aiden Holloway tonight, only five points getting the start. I think a lot of people, let me take a, a, a step back, and I will go back to the um, stats in just a second. I think a lot of people are starting to overly focus on Aiden Holloway being in the starting lineup still. Um you have to remember that the swaps were made because of size issues uh, needing to be addressed while Jalen was out and not 100%. Looked pretty good tonight, so maybe we can switch back to having him in the starting lineup and maybe bringing Trey back in, but that was made for necessities for a dude, two different rotations to have um, a fair amount of size that they very much needed, especially against this game. Jalen Williams tonight with 12 points. Can't say enough about his game. Three rebounds, four assists, one steal. Uh, he did a great job tonight, I think, in a situation where he had every excuse to have an off game and solid game from Jalen coming back from the injury. No points for Cardwell, Trey Donaldson, uh, Leor Berman, as we talked about, who had a great night. Five points for him and very aggressive at times, even on defense. Katie Johnson with 10 points, knocking down some solid shots tonight. He's 100% from the free throw line. Let's look at personal fouls. Cause I know that's a big sticking point for a lot of people. 25 personal fouls for Auburn tonight and 21 for Tennessee. So obviously most of those came at the end. So it was a pretty fair called game. In my opinion, when you just look at the numbers, some people are going to say, no, I know I get it. I get it. But the reality is it was a evenly called game for the most part, in my opinion. Uh, we got our average points, but we just allowed too many points. So, well, and that'll usually bite you in the butt. <laughs> if you get your average points, but allow way too many more than you normally give up. Uh, that's not a good, uh, recipe for you. Where do you find shooters like number three? Uh, connect is quite the beast. I'm guessing that's who number three was. Yes. Number three. I didn't look at his number. Um, he is quite the beast from the three-point arc from two-point. What I was impressed with, I, I'm never shocked that guys are good at three-pointers because that's what everybody loves to shoot, everybody loves to practice, but he was good off the dribble in the paint, you know, from the elbow extended. 
I really liked what I saw holistically tonight. Uh, whoever said it, was it Jimmy Dykes that said the scouts there tonight put their books away. <laughs> they saw everything they needed to see from him. The good thing for Janai too, scouts being there to focus on connect, saw him and he had a great game too. So he came back for a reason to really improve his draft stock. And I think he's continuing to do that. The shame is, is that he's having such a good season where he could have been SEC player of the year, but then this dude is dropping a 40 piece uh, in games. Like it's nobody's business. Uh, I like how we ran the offense through him tonight. Great coaching. Indeed. I, I do think for the most part, this was one of the better, not just games, but coach games, not perfect, but I, I just, I like this game. This felt like a March madness game tonight to me. I don't know how you all felt, but I just loved uh, the heck out of it. Um, let's see here. Ready for Missouri to have one player who randomly goes off like connect. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, look for connect to score 50 against Alabama. Maybe so we can only hope so at this point. All right, let's look at team stats. Let's talk about that. that will give us the tail of the tape, so to speak. Uh, on a night where Auburn had every reason to kind of fall back in some of their old habits, shot pretty well tonight. 45% from the field. Tennessee shot 50% to be expected. And same thing on that side of the uh, three-point percentage. 40 for Auburn, pretty good. Uh, 52 for Tennessee. So I, wa I want to put that into perspective, folks. Tennessee is a good basketball team, but if connect doesn't do what he does, Auburn wins this game. They shot 50% from the field, 52% from the three point arc decently from free throw. And still Auburn was in it to win this game. I want to keep that into perspective right there. Uh, free throw percentage for Auburn tonight, 75%, not where I'd like it to be, but definitely not, um, where it needs to be. Let's look at rebounds. Auburn loses that battle 30 to 37. Uh, it's a decent enough margin, but it's at home. So you expect Tennessee to do that. They took care of business in that category at home. And then turnovers, uh, 16 for Auburn, 13 for Tennessee. Early in this game, you saw the ball literally just slipping out of players' hands, especially Tennessee. In fact, I would argue that the reason that Auburn was able to come back twice in this game. I think they got out to a seven point lead and then a nine point lead in the second half is because of the sloppiness of Tennessee. Auburn was obviously clearly more sloppy by the end of this thing, losing that battle. So when you look at those three major categories, free throws, rebounds, turnovers, Auburn loses in all of those, but not by a whole lot. When you just got a guy like connect going off, like he does, um, <laughs> then you're just going to have some problems. Uh, Ryan says, I wish anyone loved me as much as the commentators love connect. That's all right, buddy. I'm sure somebody out there loves you as much as that. <laughs> um, all right. Other team stats tonight, uh, assist Auburn really good. 20 to 13, uh, 20 steals for Auburn tonight to their six. Uh, what else is important to note on one technical foul? We already talked about that on Bruce Pearl. Le largest lead was eight for Auburn. Largest lead was nine for Tennessee. So both teams tonight, big swings back and forth. The fact that Auburn responded every single time to one of these uh, runs by Tennessee and got the lead back, except at the end, um, is impressive. And I don't want that to be lost in the equation. So, that is our conversation mainly about um, this game. We can take some more commentary about it, but we want to start moving into what's next. And I know that you guys want to talk about that a little bit. Um, but let me, as we start winding down the show, give you a look at what's coming up next here for E2C Network stuff, especially on YouTube. If you like these reaction streams, we got another one Saturday. Mississippi State, right after the game, we'll do a reaction stream. I hope you can join us here Sunday night. 9 Eastern Time, The Auburn Experience, Episode 68. It actually, hopefully, will be Episode 68 this time. Had a little bit of a schedule change last week. Uh, now, this is where we get a little bit different for those of you that are regulars here. This upcoming week is going to be kind of odd. Next up, then, will be a Missouri on Tuesday reaction stream. We will have Auburn Family Night on Wednesday at 8 Eastern Time. 
and they will likely do a short baseball live stream at same night once we are done with that call-in show and the baseball uh, game gets wrapped up on Wednesday. So a little bit of swapped around stuff this week, but that's what you can anticipate for what's coming up. Um, <clears throat> is Tennessee a team we would want to play again in either the SEC tournament or March Madness? SEC tournament, yeah. March Madness, no, I don't want any more. I don't want any. I don't want any more. <laughs> I don't want any more connect in opportunities to put us out completely for the rest of the year. So I hope we go on the opposite, not just different regions of the bracket, but like opposite sides. The only way we would see them is if we so, somehow both make it to the championship game. Um, chances we win out, I think uh, they are pretty good. You've got Missouri, uh, sorry, Mississippi State, Missouri, Missouri, and uh, Georgia coming up. I think it's very strong possibility. Two of those are at home. Uh, the other one, it, Missouri is begging for an SEC win. Hopefully we don't give it to them. Mississippi State is playing decently, so that one's got me a little bit more concerned, but I, I think you're right. High chances we could win out here. What oh, you don't like Vic, uh, Dick Vitale as a announcer? I love him as an announcer. Maybe it's just me. We are now playing for seeding in the NCAA. I hope we take these next few games serious. I'm sure they will. Kevlar. Um, yeah, we've been giving all the love to connect tonight as much as we can, much to to Ryan's chagrin. <laughs> Uh, Chris John, Chris Jans is the Mississippi state head coach defense scares me. He has that defense that can really affect how we play. And that's the only way you can win in Neville arena. But the great thing is, is they got to come here to the Nev where you almost never win Kentucky did this year. All right. So I think we've covered it folks. If you've got any final comments, questions, derogatory rebuttals, get them in right now before we head out. As always, remember that schedule. We talked about tons of live streams coming up for you in the next week leading up to uh, next Wednesday, which will be a week from now. Make sure you're following us. Subscribe everywhere on social media. Don't miss out on any content, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, all the different places. There's all kinds of stuff everywhere from us. I need a break. <laughs> but thank you guys for uh, joining us tonight. And of course, as Tyler loves to say, if it's orange and blue, it is what we do. All right, we're going to call it a show. Thank you guys so much for being here, hanging out with us, and being part of our little family within the Auburn family. And until I talk to you all again, War Eagle.